uh, this work looking at uh, process compliance, electronic monitoring, and hand hygiene uh, is joint with uh, Dave Hoffman in the room, as well as a couple colleagues at other schools. And so we know that standard processes, standard work, helps us do things better, faster, cheaper. Whether it's back in Frederick Taylor's shoveling of coal, uh, moving to auto production, Toyota production system, other manufacturing approaches like ISO 9000, capability maturity model and software, or things like checklists, standardized care pathways in healthcare, tremendous potential value can come from following standard processes. And the challenge, though, also, is a lot of times people choose not to follow them. Uh, that uh, instead of you know, being safe, instead of uh, following our processes to protect our food production, uh, different challenges in healthcare, uh, or the Mars Climate Orbiter there with some uh, coordination issues leading to hundreds of millions of dollars of loss, um, by not following processes, we run into some real problems. And so in this work, what we're interested in is whether electronic monitoring might help. The fact that it's always on, that it's omnipresent, um, might lead us uh, to uh, better compliance behavior. And in particular, we study that within the healthcare context, looking at hand hygiene. Um, most of the folks in this room know that you know, for quite literally over 100 years since Ignis Semmelweis' pioneering work, uh, we've appreciated the link between hand hygiene and hospital-acquired infections. And yet, compliance often hovers around the 40% level. And so we were interested in studying that and used a novel context working with a technology company that had deployed a radio frequency based hand hygiene solution. Basically what they did is they would put RFID badges on uh, caregivers, uh, then they would put sensors around the uh, unit, including within the room, um, and uh, as well as the soap and the sanitizing agent uh, dispenser. And as such, you came into the room, um, you know, did you wash your hands or not? You know, wasn't actually that sign up there like the far side, but you get the idea. Um, what's unique is we were able to look across 71 hospital units, uh, almost 20 million hand hygiene potential instances uh, over 5,000 people. Interested in three questions here. First, kind of a large-scale program evaluation. Does electronic monitoring actually lead to um, greater use of hand hygiene, greater uh, compliance efforts? Uh, some benefits here looking across that broad sample and doing it with time uh, so we could get some identification. Second, we're interested in the effect on individuals over time. Do they build a habit? Or instead, as time passes, do we see that the cues grow less salient? And in fact, then uh, the uh, compliance behavior decreases. Third, and I think what's most interesting, is in nine units, they remove the uh, electronic monitoring equipment. And so we have a chance to actually still capture data and see what happens to compliance behavior over time. So let's quickly look at the results. To start with, we can see just the overall impact of turning it on. Recognize when we turn it on, we don't have the badges before and after. What we do have is the total use before and after. For a subset of pilot users in the research, we see this effect with the badges themselves, though. Um, and there's an increase across the majority of units, around 50% here in the summary statistics. If we do a difference in differences uh, regression analysis, then we see the same basic story. So an extraordinarily strong, large, um, organizationally meaningful um, impact. At the same time, note a number of units actually do see a decrease, so an opportunity to understand why do we see this variability, even if on average it has tremendous power. Second thing that we look at is the effect over time. What I've done is just plotted the output from our regression analysis, and we see it's an upside-down U. It's an inverted U. What happens is up until about the 20th month, this is the individual compliance behavior. Yes or no, did you wash your hands? Uh, compliance increases. But eventually, it starts to turn down. I think one of the things that's important to note here is if we want to build compliance behavior around standard practices, you know, we can't use technology as a fire and forget, uh, that we've got to couple it with other interventions as we think about kind of the management opportunity. Um, as mentioned, kind of the third piece was looking at deactivation. Now, clearly, when we're taking the badges away, it goes to zero, you know, by definition. But what's interesting is the dispensing units continued to communicate to us. So we looked at those nine units. We didn't see anything different from the rest of the sample. Um, and this upper blue line is the total use uh, that's uh, really the key part here. What happens here is not only does it decrease, which we might expect a little bit of decrease, but it falls below where we started. For these nine units, at least, it suggests they would have been better off not using electronic monitoring at all. 
And so when we think about the role here of electronic monitoring, clearly there's value as we get an overall effect, but it's not something that we can do by itself. Rather, it's got to be a part of an overall suite of activities. And finally, if we're going to drive compliance behavior, we need to appreciate what's our long-term approach rather than the risk here of actually you know, first doing some harm by deploying it if we were never going to leave it there. My work in general looks at um, human behavior and the interaction with operational processes. How do we bring those together to understand learning and process improvement to do things better, faster, and cheaper? Um, research I do uses data and uh, randomized controlled trials uh, to look at a bunch of these topics. Um, if any of those strike your fancy, then uh, I'd love to uh, chat with you within uh, one of our many coffee breaks throughout the day. Uh, things like learning, uh, learning curves, done work in cardiology, uh, in radiology, uh, team familiarity, team shared, repeated experiences together, and the positive impact on performance, uh, and some other aspects there too. Uh, but with that, um, I'll uh, get out of the way and follow my own rules and uh, hand it off to uh, Jim Johnson next. Uh